Hello and welcome to RF Pro 5 Minutes tutorial. In this tutorial, we will talk about swept 3D model analysis in RF Pro. I would recommend to use ADS 2022 update 2 or later release for these kind of analysis. Now remember 1, 2, 3 before we start, subscribe to the channel, enable notifications, like and share the video with your friends and colleagues. All right, let's go ahead and talk about sub 3D model analysis in RF Pro. Now, if you recall in the last video, we talked about two methods of using 3D components for RF Pro analysis. In method one, you can place the 3D component which you have created in EM Pro or which you might have imported in EM Pro from tools like HFSS. You can place that model directly onto ADS layout. And when you're placing, Based on your stack up, you can select on top of which layer you would like to place the component. In the second method, we didn't place the component in ADS layout. We directly place that 3D component inside RF Pro. Now, what are pros and cons of these kind of techniques and which one is more advantageous? Well, there is no straight answer, but it depends on your design flow. The advantage of approach number one, where you can place the 3D component onto PCB layout is very simple. If you have large number of components, because it's a 2D layout, you can place all these components very quickly and easily in your layout so that when you open up RF Pro, you have a fully integrated design ready for your simulation purpose. Now, uh, sometimes your static parameters are not sufficient and you may need to have uh, some kind of parameter assigned to this 3D component. Now, if you if you go to EM Pro and create a component, like in this case, it's a helix inductor or helix used to model this kind of inductor. And if you look at the 3D primitive of helix, here you can notice I have used a uh, a variable called num turns, which is assigned to this particular model. And this num turn parameter is defined in the parameter window here. So using this num turn, if I change this parameter, my geometry is parametric or dynamically changing because of this. So once you create a component like this in EM Pro, save it, and now you can add it in ADS like we talked about in the last video. When you place this component in the layout, you can double click. Among the rest of the properties, you also get that parameter to be defined here. And here you can define any value of that parameter. And once you go to RF Pro accordingly, uh, the component might appear there. Now, once you have opened your design in RF Pro and you want to change this parameter to some other value, that can be very easily done by simple right click on the layout database and selecting design parameter. Now, depending upon how many components you might have placed in your design, all of them will appear here and you can also see the parameter. And here you can change the parameter value as you want. Once you change the parameter uh, value, you can immediately see the layout view will be refreshed and now you have the parameter uh, taken effect and now your structure has changed. So you can define the parameter value on the fly and you can keep performing your EM analysis. However, the limitation of this technique is you cannot perform a parametric sweep on the 3D component parameter. Now, if you would like to do a parameter sweep, we need to do uh, we need to use the option number two as we declare. For example, in the RF Pro where we have placed the 3D EM component by going to File, Insert, EM Pro 3D Component, this will cause a 3D primitive or 3D component to be inserted in your design database, but it is not part of your layout definition. So once you have a model like this, you can simply right click on it, Click on design parameter and you can provide the value of that parameter. Now here you can see that value, I'm using a variable called end turns and this variable has been added in our parameter list. And I have already talked all this in the previous videos of the parametric EM analysis. So once you change the parameter value to some other and you click apply, you can see live changes on your structure and this is very similar to what we I have shown you in the previous uh, method as well. 
But the advantage of this is now, once you have a parameter assigned to this component, I can go ahead and set up a parameter sweep in EM Pro. And here you can see I'm sweeping n turns variable from one to nine. That means in the increment of one, I'm changing the number of turns of the coil of this inductor. And once I perform simulation, you can see all the simulations will be performed sequentially, pretty much like how I have shown you in the process variation or parametric EM analysis uh, video. You have all the values and you can click on individual uh, you know, simulation option and look at the log is specific to that particular value. Now, once your simulation is done, you can open up the S parameter plot. And here you can either look at inductance or S parameter, and then you can see all the parameter value and you can pick and choose any of those parameter value, which you would like to see your circuit response on, or directly click on this group select icon so that all the values get selected and you can see the performance of your entire circuit. Uh, varying over uh, different value combination. At the same time, because this is a simple inductor, you can also change the inductor and see how inductance changes with respect to frequency and number of turns. Now, if you zoom into a small portion of this design uh, here, now you can see the overall value spread and now you can easily place a marker at the lowest value as well as, as the highest value of this inductance to see the value spread of this inductance. So here you can see uh, the value of inductance is changing from 3.5 nano Henry, which correspond to one turn inductor to approximately 20 nano Henry, which is belonging to nine turn inductor. So you can tweak the geometry parameter based on your design requirement and then perform the full 3D analysis on this complete parametric structure. So that's all for this video. I hope you like the content presented and it will be useful in certain applications of your design work. Thanks a lot for watching and wish you all the best in your design work.